it was one of the most powerful experiences I have ever had with my teacher, Dr. Craig Carter, who used to do the healing mission. And uh, anyhow, we're going to make this an ongoing thing. And the people here had a wonderful evening, as we do every Sunday and every Wednesday. We do it because we have something important to teach. In times of doubt, when it seems that you don't have enough faith to get through the day, you can at any moment stop yourself in the middle of all of that confusion, doubt, and fear and recognize there is one life, it's God. That's your life. And think from that, not from the condition, but from the truth of yourself. Just like Meister Eckhart said, go back to the place where God was at the center of your decision. Because it hadn't gone anywhere. All you have done, if you find yourself caught up in the experience you're going through, is you get hypnotized by the world. Be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are, as we are told by the great teachers, Dr. Ernest Holmes pointed out, we are partakers of the divine nature and there is incorporated in our nature that wisdom and intelligence and love which can never be lost. It can never be lost. We can become dislocated in relationship to it. But our understanding is there is an eternal reality that's always looking out of our eyes if we let it. Let go and let God. Not make God, beseech God, make a deal with God, beg God, or any other kind of experience. Let God. Everyone say, change for the better, for the better. is mine by right of consciousness. Right here and right now. My change for the better starts. And I celebrate it before the world ever sees it. And I don't care whether it does or not. I see it. See, that's what's important. Do you see it? Do you see the best of yourself and the opportunity that's in front of you? You see, your opportunity is only waiting for your deeper understanding of the truth of you. I don't care what it is. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. There is a life-changing universal principle that the Reverend Dar talked about in her whole, the whole lesson this morning. This life-changing principle that's within you is the heart of our teaching. Religious science. It's the heart of what we teach every Sunday and every Wednesday. I was just sharing with someone, if you come here on Sunday, you're going to leave with a lesson that could be used in any first-year class in the world. That's what my teachers taught me. That we are teachers, we're not preachers. Sometimes I preach teach, but that's okay. <laughs> and so does, so does Dar. So does Lacey. Listen, you know, Lacey speak. I, I was, <laughs> Reverend Lacey, I don't know if you know where he is. He is on a 10-day silence retreat. <laughs> Now, two weeks from now, you don't want to miss first service because I got news for you. Lacey going to be ready to say something. <laughs> Outstanding. John Lame Deer, one of the clear Native American thinkers, said these words, love is something you can leave behind when you die. It's powerful. It's powerful. We celebrate as we are this weekend the passing of our former president of religious science and my dear friend, our dear friend, Dr. David Walker. And I was thinking about how David, uh, how much he gave to all of us. And how as other great teachers that have come our way have uh, left behind wonderful teacher teaching by right of consciousness we are all part of that which we experience not only in the outer but in our inner understanding Dr. Finn McCombs always taught me Jay be such a good teacher that your students can replace you and I thought about that this week of all the students that David Walker touched and the lives he touched and I thought about the fact that every time I stand up here on Sunday morning, I'm representing Dr. William Hornaday, 
I'm representing Dr. Craig Carter. I'm representing Dr. Edith Clark. I'm representing Dr. Reginald Armour. I'm representing Dr. Raymond Charles Barker. I'm representing Dr. Robert Bitzer. I'm representing Dr. Carmelita Trowbridge. I'm representing all of these great teachers because you see, dear people, we do stand on the shoulders of giants who have all taught as the great throughout the age have taught that the power you're looking for is within you and have taught very clearly that truth is not truth unless it leads you to you, not to something else. This is what separates us from most teaching, is that we're not here to lead you to this church or a teaching or anything. We're here to lead you to you, to let you discover within yourself, as Dr. Fenwick Holmes said to me once, Jay, everybody who walks through your doors needs to hear very clearly they are greater than they think they are, always. So this celebration is something that we find within our teaching. This is a experience that allows us to begin to invite greatness and give it a challenge to come forth. This is why you hear me almost every week challenge you to not leave here just knowing about this. Leave here letting the world see what you say you know and be what you say you are. There's one life, it's God, it is your life. You are never separated from it. If you take the opportunity you have every day of your life to move forward in a positive way, you find that the world's great spiritual teaching is good enough to be true as you and it's not enough that all the great teachers understood what they were teaching. What you need to know is you can understand it. And you can be it. And you can allow yourself to let go and let it look out of your eyes. In 1 John 4.10, we see these wonderful words and we have known and believe the love of God that God hath to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in them. For God is love. God is not a big person sitting on a throne with an ego problem. Okay. It isn't something sitting on a throne somewhere that likes the Methodists better than the Presbyterians. <laughs> Although they may, no, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting. I was raised in a church. We had a Presbyterian family who lived next door to us. Children the same wage as we were. We were not allowed to play with them when I was growing up because they were going to the place religious science doesn't believe in. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Then I found years later Alan Watts. And I had this question, why did the people do this? Why do they separate themselves in the name of God? And he said, because they think they're saved. And he said these words, people who think they're saved have to build walls around themselves and have the unsaved on the other side of the wall so they can justify their position. Ah, I woke up. He said the wonderful thing, you see, how many know that Alan Watts left, uh, was asked to leave the priesthood, he was Episcopal priest, or he was Church of England, and he was asked to leave because he was writing for Science of Mind magazine. Isn't that interesting? How many know and love Alan Watts? If you have, if you, if you have anything you can find by Alan, it's worth your time. He said once, we were with him. And he was out and we were up here in Moran and he said, look at this wonderful, wonderful thing. He said, everywhere God is, it just flows. And then man shows up and it's a box. <laughs> and then, don't we do this in consciousness? Don't we build a box and say, this is all I am and this is all I can do and it must be something that made me do it? What if we got rid of the box? What if we got outside the box, as they say? outside of the limitation of yesterday, outside of the doubt and the fear. You see, we have within us, as William Law said, when he pointed out we must alter our lives in order to alter our hearts, 